How many um how many surgeries did you have to have? Well, me and mom we tried to keep count, but we lost count. Many. But uh, I would say around forty. Oh my god, I've had two. My appendix. Hey, everyone has uh, you know, and I'm glad you said that because that's a, that's something that I really focus on in the book, and uh, it's tough, and it upsets me when I whether it's a meet and greet or just hang out with with people uh, at events you know people that have never served will come up and everyone who meets me always starts out with pretty much the same same statement well i was never in the military and i don't think i would ever you know i don't think i would ever done what you did and if people were in the military or are in the military They'll say, you know, well, I was in infantry or you know, I, I never did anything like you. I never went to combat. And struggle, I wrote this book from the perspective of struggle because I realized after years of kind of deep thought and reflection that struggle even though it's unique to every person, struggle is the one thing and the one common thread throughout every single person on this earth. Yeah. And struggle is the last thing that people should ever compare. We all have our struggles, mental, physical, or emotional. Yep. And yes, I got hit with a grenade. I spent three years in the hospital. It was very difficult, but I'm still here smiling. You know, someone that had you know, a car wreck and just had a, a a bad break in their leg. You know, people handle things differently. And that could be harder on someone, as crazy as it sounds, than what I went through. So, you know, Probably I just people I, who, who miss their show and, and don't handle it as well as what even <laughs> you're handling. <laughs> you didn't DVR Peppa Pig? <laughs> <laughs> My son, yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I mean, it's... Uh... But you, the way you describe this experience, it just sounds like, you know, to uh, I didn't pick up on that theme in here, um, but I'm glad you pointed it out because now I, I see it, the the struggle that everyone has their own struggles. And my, I remember my sister saying something very, very poignant and eye-opening to me when we were very young. She said something along the lines of like, we were going through something in the house. I don't remember what it was, but it was something that I would have rather not been going through family-wise. It was either my sister or me or, or my other sister. I don't remember what it was, but I said, uh, I was trying to make sense of it. And I, at that point, I don't know if I'm, I'm 39, after school specials were a big thing in like the 80s. Do you remember those or no? You might, I think you're younger than me, so you probably aren't familiar with them. But basically, after school, they would have something on at like 3 or 4 o'clock that was a tough topic to talk about, and they would do like an hour, uh, like a, a movie about it, right? Oh, so awesome. kids being beat at home, rape, drug abuse, whatever, like these heavy, heavy topics, they would handle them in these after-school specials. Oh, so I wow. said to my sister, I said, you know, everyone's got their own problems. Uh, you know, I feel like we're living in an after-school special and uh, I said, everyone's got their problems and everyone seems to be okay. And she goes, yeah, but someone who was beaten as a kid is gonna have a lot different expectations of the world than someone who, you know, the worst thing that ever happened in their life was they got a B on a test. They're gonna see the world completely differently and they're gonna expect different from the world. And from that point, I decided that I had to raise my expectations of the world, not in a negative way where like I was entitled, but as far as what was possible and what kind of life that I could live, because at that point it looked like I was gonna live a pretty tough life marred with you know struggle and not the good struggle, like bad struggle. There's two things I think people do when they struggle. They either suffer or they deal with, and I deal with everything. I don't suffer from anything pretty much ever anymore. And I used to suffer from everything. And I think when you're suffering, you would trade your struggles with anybody because you think that you know anybody's got to have it better than you whereas when you're dealing with stuff like I do now and it sounds like you do obviously I wouldn't trade places with anybody in the world because I know that wherever I go whatever body I'm able to somehow transport into there's going to be 
problems. And I guess obviously there's there's some struggles that are more desirable than others. But last night I was watching Succession, the uh, the season finale. You watch that show on uh, HBO? No, but I think I need to start it because oh, so you're like good, the third man. person that's talked to me about it. It's so well done. It's funny. It's it's like heavy. So anyway, they're they're trying to determine who's going to take the fall for this thing that happened in the company. And they're all on this yacht, which is like, it's got to be a topic of conversation on the internet because the yacht was just like probably a $250 million yacht. The thing was just ridiculous. And they're all on the boat and they're all miserable, miserable because they're stressed out about this thing that they have to deal with. And I was like, I was thinking, what a waste to be in such a beautiful, they're in like some, you know, the uh, the islands of the Maldives or whatever on this massive Somewhere yacht. where someone takes a $250 million yeah, yacht. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're just unable to enjoy it. Yeah. And I thought of the, the Henry David Thoreau quote, beauty cannot be perceived, but with a serene mind. So, I, I, you know, to apply that to the struggle, struggles cannot be dealt with, but with a serene mind, because you're going to come across struggles wherever you are. Obviously, somebody would say, I'd rather struggle on a yacht than, you know, on a street corner homeless, obviously, of course. But I've met some, I've seen some pretty happy, really poor people before also. It really is your your perception that, sha- that shapes everything. You are exactly right. And you, uh, another uh, kind of theme in the book is you choose, you always have a choice at what lens you use and what perspective uh, you, you uh choose to take from that situation and how you can learn from it and grow from it and become better. Uh, But uh, a story that I talk about and one of the most profound moments since I joined the Marine Corps is I was laying on the ground in Afghanistan the first month, month and a half that we were there. I mean, it was the entire deployment was super primitive. We didn't have beds We just slept on the ground, no showers for seven months. We were so far behind enemy lines and out in the middle of nowhere. All of our supplies had to get dropped by helicopter. And I'm laying there on the ground one night. We had been there just for a few days, so I was still trying to like process, wow, I'm actually here laying on the ground in Afghanistan. And I'm looking up, and I see something that I've seen so many times in my life before a commercial plane flying overhead and the blinking lights. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, like, what? I'm sitting here not knowing if this was my last night on Earth. And I'm looking at these people, yeah, 30,000 miles away or 30,000 feet up in the air, yes, but I can, in a way, still see them. Mm-hmm. And they're probably clean, not smelling like we are, <laughs> sipping a, a you know and water with ice in it uh just stuff that we didn't have and and comfortable and safe on this plane and we're down here below fighting for our lives and so that was just such a surreal moment but taught me that are you really seeing those around you are you really, you know, looking through those different lenses of perspective? Because we could see each other, but where we were coming from was just so drastically different. Yeah. And so I'm very thankful for that moment laying on the ground there in Afghanistan. 